Hi everyone, welcome back. So literally, me trying to take the thumbnail for this video looks like I'm taking a dump like in every single one. So whatever thumbnail you get, I don't know, I'm making no promises on my facial expression because it literally looked like I was trying to squeeze out a turd. I don't know how to do a disappointing face. My disappointing face is like all of my other faces. It's like I have this like one face and it's like I'm not buying what you're saying. It's like whatever you said sucked. It's like I'm disappointed in you. My one face is like and every time I did that face, it like looked even more horrible for the thumbnail. Not that you guys care, so let's get to what we're talking about. Disappointing products. So I have a Friday favorites and flops, and a lot of times I'll include some of these products as my flops. Um, sometimes I've mentioned them throughout the time, but I just thought I would compile them all into one video. Now these are products that aren't necessarily horrible they might be good for someone else these are higher end products i'm pretty sure yeah all of these were like higher end products that i would consider a little bit more expensive that i that i don't think are worth the price that disappointed me so something about them just didn't work for me now I'm just one person and I'll try and tell you as best I can why they didn't work for me. So if you don't have that problem, maybe that product will work for you. If you do have that problem, maybe like if you're similar to me and, and maybe whatever I say about a specific thing why it didn't work, maybe then you'll know not to purchase that product. So it can just help a little bit. So take it for what it's worth, but these are some products that I personally just didn't they just disappointed me. They were like lackluster for me. So I'm going to start off with something that I have a different set of them because I got another set in like some type of beauty box or something. But I had tried these. These are like the little micro mini beauty blenders. What I want to say is why. Like the original beauty blender comes to a point so you can like just press it and get right in there. I'm like, these are like so, so, I have small hands. I have like really small like little fingers and tiny little nuggety fingernails that are dumb and I hate. So I feel like I can get like, I don't feel like I'm a fat fiddled finger, but I feel like these make me feel like a fat fiddly finger person because I'm all like arr, 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 trying to get in there. It's like rolling around, it's flying places no me gusta like does not work for me whatsoever they're too small like why you gotta be so small just a little bit smaller or like not, not a little bit smaller but like the original beauty blender then there's like a blush one and if they could just go a touch smaller that would be better but these micro ones are just like they slip right out of your fingers and then you got concealer everywhere i've gotten concealer on a shirt before and you no, that stuff does not come out. It was like one of those, it was like my Pro Longwear concealer and it slipped out of my hand and fell on my shirt and I was like, gone for good. So for that reason, the super disappointing product. So next thing up is from Tarte and I typically love a lot of um, Tarte products. So I was really excited to try these because I love different types of makeup wipes. These are specifically for the eyes. These are the Tarte Fresh Eyes. They are supposed to be for removing makeup. I don't like these because they just like they irritate my eyes and they're very oily residue so it's basically like a cloth soaked in like eye makeup remover is what I think and I just don't like that because every time I use one it's like this greasy oily residue and I don't think it takes off my eye makeup that like, I know it's supposed to be travel friendly but like I just don't like these it says it even Maracuja waterproof eye makeup remover wipes. So I just, I don't like them and they just leave like a weird residue. So no. This product is just a sample. So I didn't spend the money on it, but I'm like really glad that I tried it because it was something I really, really wanted to try. I'm definitely into liquid bronzers and this is from Benefit. This is Do The Hula. This is just straight up like almost like an orangey cream bronzer that leaves very little behind, very little pigment, and I'm a fair person, but it just is really, really orange. It's, it doesn't have enough pigment in it. It's a weird, like, 
gel consistency. I just, I didn't like it. I couldn't find a good use for it because it was so wet, but not pigmented enough that if I even tried to blend it out, it would lose the pigment and apply to my face extremely patchy. I don't really have anything to say about the smell, but it was mainly just super patchy. The consistency just didn't work for me. Um, the, the consistency versus the amount of pigment included, just it wasn't happening for me. So this is no. Okay, I have several foundations that I just personally did not work for me. I don't think they're worth the money. The first one is another thing from Tarte, unfortunately. This is the um, Rainforest of the Sea Water Foundation. I have mine in Fairlight Neutral. I really wanted to love this foundation. It's supposed to have like a medium to buildable coverage with like a matte finish, but it's a more water-based foundation. It's like a serum dropper. This just applied to my skin. It just looked like straight up foundation on my skin. I thought it was going to be this just really beautiful look. I didn't find it lasting on my skin and it just, the smell of it was really strong for me. This like weird plasticky smell. I just didn't like the way it wore. It broke up on my skin. It didn't wear for the amount of time that I wanted it to and it just did not look good on my skin. So for that reason, I was just like, nope, not impressed with this. I just didn't think it was worth the money. I also am like not really in love with the concealer, but it's a little bit better, so I didn't want to officially include it. But this was just a product that didn't work, and I was really excited because it's supposed to have like a soft matte finish and be super hydrating so if you have drier skin it's supposed to work so I don't know I just couldn't get it to work for me and so for that reason I just don't think it was worth the money speaking of foundations again like I said I have a few here that I just didn't work for me so I thought I would include them in this video the Charlotte Tilbury magic foundation this was a highly anticipated foundation it's supposed to be this just like magical foundation that really hydrated your skin dry like a satin matte finish and I thought that it was like it was so highly anticipated when I got this foundation I was like no I just I there's nothing about it that I like so I mean it's a pump foundation it looked horrible on my skin literally horrible you could see it sitting on top of my skin I tried using beauty blender I tried using like even when I'm rubbing it on my hand I'm like no it could be the color of the foundation was too light but no I can even see just the consistency of it it just doesn't work into your skin very well I don't know what it is but it just doesn't blend into the skin it literally like you can just see it, it it's one of those foundations that you can detect it on your face it also broke up on my skin and just was really really unflattering Any foundation I think over $30 I'm just a little bit disappointed in ya this is the MAC Pro Longwear Nourishing Waterproof Foundation. I was so excited for this to come out. I thought, waterproof, yes. Nourishing, yes. Like, Pro Longwear, yes. So it's supposed to wear forever. It's going to be waterproof on me. It's going to be hydrating. No. This was, again, another foundation. Let me tell you the shade that I have, NC20. This is another foundation. This is the right shade for me. This just doesn't work it's too thick it doesn't it's not that it doesn't last but it just I don't like the way when it does last on my skin the way that it looks it's another one that I feel like it's super hydrating but it it doesn't feel waterproof to me as in I don't feel like it super lasts on my skin it just felt like it sort of let a lot of oil come through and I don't know if that's because it was nourishing but I got super oily with this and then it started to break down because of that oil so it might just be because I it was summer when I tried this again but the first time I did try it was in the winter so I thought okay well it's gonna be hydrating like my skin's a little bit more dry it still for some reason was one of the patients that my skin almost just felt like it couldn't breathe and that just started to produce oil. I don't know what it was, 
but I just I didn't like the way it looked on my skin it just didn't sit well with me so I was disappointed in that because I really had high hopes for it okay the last foundation that I was like why is everyone loving this it's horrible is the Josie Marin Vibrancy Foundation. Thank you, sweet baby Jesus, but I got this online as a little, um, I got it in the shade Dynamic. I got this as a little sample to try prior to purchasing it. It was full size was in my cart. I was like, I heard people talking about it. They were loving it, super hydrating. It's my go-to foundation. I tried this and I was like, oh no, mm, mm, mm. No, 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 no. It looked horrible. It was cakey and like, it never set. It literally never set on my skin. It just was like foundation sitting there. I tried even a thin layer and it was just like, it was just like so dewy that it was, I don't even know. Like I had a little bit of dry skin. No, no, no. This attaches to any dry patches that you have. It is so super dewy it doesn't ever dry down it stays tacky and like weird all day long I hated it I literally hate it. it's full coverage so it just like feels mask like to me and the fact that it never dried down just makes me feel yucky so I did not like this no 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 super disappointed but really glad that I didn't spend the money on the full size okay something that I think isn't a horrible product but it just disappointed me because I like I don't know if I expected my brows to be golden or something but the Dior all in brow 3d backstage brow kit I got this this is in the color 002 blonde I got this, it came on recommendation of someone who I think has really great recommendations. Um, I, I don't necessarily want to say because this person always recommends things and that's the thing, if I get recommended a product by someone and it doesn't work for me, that doesn't mean that they're like making false claims, you know. I just think that obviously just some things just don't work for me. So this was, it's a brow powder. She said that this was super amazing. I know it appears like I have not <laughs> tested this to its full potential, but it comes with three little brushes and then it has like a darker color, a lighter color, and then this like wax right here. So the wax, I, I don't necessarily always use waxes in products, so I haven't really tried this product out. But between the two powders, I have used both of them. I did like them but they are not amazing and they just don't last as long as my Anastasia powders do and I mean this whole palette was like fifty dollars or something like that which is like ridiculous to spend on your eyebrows but I thought if these like lasted forever if the color was just super amazing for a blonde and whatever it would be worth the money because it's like oh well you can just pack your one little brow you know thing for brow powder and go but it just was like that's just a ridiculous amount of money for two powder brow products and a wax when I can just you know I don't even use the wax so for me personally someone if you use the wax maybe it would be great but I don't find in comparison to Anastasia little like if you just got like the split pan from Anastasia which is like 20 something dollars versus that. Maybe it's $18. I don't know, but it's way cheaper. Those last so much longer on my eyebrows for a powder product versus the Dior. So the Dior was really just paying for the packaging, the name and whatever because the products just don't match up to the price tag. Okay, I have a mascara and I can't remember if I've included this in a video prior just talking about it being disappointing but this is the um, Estee Lauder Sumptuous Extreme Lash Multiplying Volume Mascara. I love volumizing mascaras. I thought this would be a great one. Um, it came highly recommended but the brush is literally gigantic. <laughs> like I don't even know if I can try and tell you like can you see the ginormousness of this? It's it's literally enormous. Right now, I think every guy who is hearing me talk would be like, oh, I wish that's what she said, but this this brush is just seriously huge, and it's like, I don't know. It just, like, feels weird every time I put it on my eye. Like, I can't use it. It just is, like, so 
intrusive. It's, what's the word? Not intrusive, obtrusive. I don't know. It's just like freaking in my way. I can't even get it together when I'm trying to use this. I'm like all over the place. I'm like, arr, arr. I just, it's just like the biggest freaking brush. It's so fat. It's like so long. <laughs> I just wish someone was like standing outside the store. It's so fat. It's so long. It's so big. But like for real, this is just like a jacked up mascara brush. And for that reason, I just, I can't use it. And it was exp it was more expensive of a mascara, so I'm like, Mur -hur. you know, just really disappointing. I usually like things big, but nope, not that. Not my mascara wand. I needed a little bit smaller. So MAC came out with these. These are called the Very Varus Color Stains. And this these were several of them, they're like a hybrid of like gloss, liquid, stain type products. So I got several of them. And I just don't like the consistency. They're kind of like the YSL glossy stains. But I got a few colors. Obviously this one out of all of them. This is in the color Forever Darling. This stains the most out of all of them. But it's it's a pretty color. But I just, I don't know. Like, there it is right there. I mean, it's a very pretty color. And if you, you know, blend it in, I'm going to... So you can see, it does leave a stain behind. It's just, it's like a weird formula, and I don't know. I just don't love them. Maybe if you have, like, the darker color, it is going to leave a little bit of a stain behind. But it's like this tacky, wet feeling. They're a little bit difficult to work with. So they're kind of like the YSL Glossy Stains. I just thought they were a flop. I didn't really hear very many people talk about them. That's probably for a reason, just because they're nothing special. So a little bit disappointing. I think I bought, like, four or five to do a review, and then I was just like so underwhelmed by them but I should have done the review on them because then I could have been like nope these are underwhelming don't get them um okay speaking of sort of like stain products that I just I don't know when I first got these I did a review on them these are the um Lancome Juicy Shakers I really wanted to love these packaging absolutely adorable I love the fact that they were like stain products that had shine and we're supposed to be super moisturizing and um, they all have different scents. So I purchased about eight of them and they're like 20 something dollars each so they're not cheap. And I was like so excited about them because I had heard that they had that long lasting shine and then leave a stain behind. Let me tell you a little story. So I tried them out and I, I at first I liked them but I I tried like a deeper color that did leave a little bit of a stain behind. So one of the darker shades that I did have, like I think it was called like Bohemian R Raspberry or something like that, it left a stain behind. Not a significant one, okay? So just for the for the record, not a significant one. Left a stain behind. Um, the shine literally disappears within two minutes. Like I'm not kidding you. Dana came over, my friend Dana. And I was like, just try one of these. Like, I'm really sad about them because I, like, really wanted to love these. Wanted to keep them in my purse, whatever, whatever, yada, yada. I'm like, I, I literally think they're drying my lips out because I had used them for, like, five days. And my lips were, like, so freaking dry. And then they started cracking and all this stuff. And I was like, I don't know if it's something I'm using or whatever. It was these. They were drying my lips out. Your lips, like, lose shine instantly. Within two minutes. The shine is gone. Like, so forget the shine. So, whatever. Let me, let me just try and back up here. So they have, like, this little sponge applicator. You're supposed to dot it on your lips. This one is called, which, the reason that I brought this one is because this is, like, the crappy one of all of them. It's Boomerang, which is, like, supposed to be a pink. Like, if you're going to get one of these, if you really are going to risk it, get a darker color because you're going to get more of a stain with it. But don't think that you're going to get long-lasting shine. The, the shine literally wears away, like I said, within two minutes. That's basically it right there. So for these lighter colors, you're getting nothing honey, okay, is what you're getting. Because you're getting like a product that you can constantly be putting on your lips. And you're, you're keeping them hydrated because but it's one of those things like it's chapping your lips out more so you think you need to put on more product and then that's chapping them even more and then you put on more product. So they're like, oh, you can build the product up. Well, no, you're not doing anything but chapping your lips. 
So the, the shine's gone, you don't have a stain, and so basically you have nothing. So you just paid pretty much to put on a lip product that smells good for two seconds and then done, boom, you're done. So I gave these to my little girls. I was just like, here, you have them because they're no good to me. Okay, the last product up, or the, the last thing that I think is a little bit disappointing to me, only because I'm such a lover of these palettes, is the Lorac 3 palette. Now, I love the Lorac palettes. The Lorac 1 is like one of my all-time favorite. It's just a great palette because the, it's the, um, all these palettes of the Lorac Pro palettes have a top row of matte and a bottom row of shimmer. Genius. So I was really looking forward to the third palette. I just have to say that the reason that this disappointed me is because all of these shades are nothing special. They're not extremely pigmented. Like these three right here pretty much leave like no pigment on the eyes. This one right here in Cool Taupe, I mean I have several colors very similar to that in other palettes. So I mean that's really the only transition shade that you can use. Um, there is this color in Terracotta, which is a little bit more of a warmer shade. It's okay, but it's not s extremely pigmented. And then you have the dark brown and the jet black. So, I mean, you can find a dark brown and a jet black in any palette. So really nothing unique or special in the first row. Nothing making me want to grab this palette. Then the last row, the bottom row, the last row. There's so many rows, but this is the last row. This bottom row... Uh, it's just like the shimmer shades are just not that special. I just wasn't wowed. I wanted to be so wowed by like some rosy, I don't know what I was expecting. This color in medallion is like, I mean, I don't know if you can see this, but it's just like patchy as all get out. Like it's so crumbly and patchy. It doesn't even like, let me just try and swatch this for you. It's crumbling and like there's tons of fallout on my hand and then like the shade is like crumbling everywhere and there's like weird glitters in it and it's patchy and it just doesn't do anything. The, the only shade that's like really worth anything in here is this light pewter which is a really pretty you know taupey light shade. I don't know I was just like what? Why? I was so excited about that palette but it just it didn't, it made me so sad because I was like, uh, eh. you know, I just got real disappointed. So like my disappointed face is like, I don't know, whatever I did in the thumbnail. But yeah, it just, I was expecting so much and I felt like there's so many more directions that they could go with the, the f -f 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 with the third palette. And I was just like, Meh. so those are some products that I just didn't, they disappointed me. I didn't think they were worth the money. Uh, if you have products or if you've done a video like this, let me know down below so we can all kind of share some ideas and, you know, chat down below. If you are new to my channel, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button below so that you do not miss a video. I am going to be having a 70K giveaway coming up because I hit 70K recently enough and I wanted to do a giveaway another giveaway I just ended my back to school giveaway but I have so many more things and giveaways planned on my channel so make sure you subscribe um, so that you can get notified of those thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all in the next video Mwah.